So Scott, tell me a little bit about iNaturalist. What is it? So at its simplest, iNaturalist is just a social network where people are sharing photographs of nature and having conversations about these photographs. And I think at its core, it's really an education tool. How do we get people connected with the outdoors? But as, an, as a scientist, what I think is really exciting is this ex is exactly the kind of data that we need to do conservation. We need lots of people out there, boots on the ground, local knowledge, but we need the ability to sort of bring this data together so we can get a real-time picture of what's happening to, the, to the, the Earth's biodeath. So the basic sort of iNaturalist use case is you're out on a hike and you see a butterfly or a frog and you go, hmm, I want to learn more about that. And you take a picture of it and you share it. And then the iNaturalist community will say, you know, that's a, that's a swallowtail butterfly. It's really interesting. This is the kind of plant it eats. It's actually kind of unusual to see at this time of year. So the incentive for you to participate is that you are sort of learning about the natural world. But uh, that data is the kind of data that museums have been collecting for hundreds of years, but we're able to collect it at scale. Anybody can contribute, anybody can do this, and it doesn't take a lot of skills. You just have to be able to be where you are be the, you know, an explorer in your backyard and take a picture of something. And then, and, and then science. We're getting people outside, we're connecting people to nature, but we're also gathering this kind of data at exactly the scale we need. It really empowers you that you can contribute to something. You can be a part of something larger than the individual. This is a real-time feed of what's happening globally on a naturalist right now. So about every 10 seconds, somewhere, somewhere in the world, sees a butterfly, sees a frog, and takes a picture of it and shares it. And mostly they're doing that because they sort of, they want to learn more. And yet what, uh, what happens once that's posted is that the community on a naturalist identifies that and puts a name to it and says, well, this is actually this species. And by synthesizing that observation with all the hundreds of thousands of other observations of that type, it gives us a real-time synthetic picture of what's happening. And so scientists look at the state and go, wow, this is really interesting. That species isn't supposed to occur there. You know what that is? That's an invasive species. That's a new agricultural pest outbreak. Or wait a minute, this is a threatened population that we thought was only there, and we were putting all of our conservation resources there, but here we found out that it lives over there. And the only way we're able to see this is by getting lots of people involved and sort of synthesizing the data like you're seeing on the screen that is coming into a synthetic picture. So tell me, have you found new species, things you otherwise would not have known about using this? Yeah, there's been a a, a really an interesting stream of, of science that comes, of scientific discovery that comes out every day from my naturalist. And it's on a spectrum from things that are just a little unusual yeah. to things that are really, really exciting. Yeah. We had a new species described, which was a, a man down in Colombia who was really passionate about his, uh, his local ranch, taking pictures of everything there. He took a picture of a dart frog, a beautiful frog, no idea what it was. And that connected him with a group of amphibian specialists who really know dart frogs. And I think that connection between someone who's passionate about their local backyard, but can't be expected to know every orchid or every dart frog in their backyard, with people who are passionate about a particular group of organisms, but can't be expected to know every backyard in the world. And so that cross-pollination between sort of place-based champions and you know biodiversity species-based champions is a really a fruitful area of cross-pollination. So that turned out to be um, a new species of frog. They mounted an expedition and actually described a new species. It really is one of those rare win-wins. I mean, citizen science, people tend to think that it's either, you know, it's either education or it's science. But it's doing science that you couldn't do because you need to engage people, or it's engaging people with a sense of sort of community and purpose that you couldn't do if you didn't have the science. And that's what I think is so great about citizen science. It is a true win-win.